بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأفضل الصلاة وزكاة التسليم على من يوفي رحمة العالمين نبينا محمد وعلى له وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to our class of علوم القرآن The Sciences of the Quran Today inshallah we'll discuss very important issue which is compiling the Quran All what we will talk about today is answering one question How this Quran came to us how it reached us. You will be asked by Muslims or even non-Muslims. Now, how this Quran came to us? Did it come to us in, in a book like that, compiled, or there was a history behind this? So today, inshallah, we will discuss this issue. However, before that, we have a gift for you. We have a quiz. So I hope everybody is ready, inshallah. The first question, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, awfu bil'uqud. All you who believe, fulfill the contracts, the transactions. This is the first ayah of Surah Al-Ma'idah. So, if you hear this ayah, what do you say? This is a Makki or Madani ayah? And I want your answers now. Is it a Makki or Madani ayah? يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَوْفُوا بِالْعُقُودِ All you who believe, fulfill the transactions, the contracts, yes? Madani. Madani. Why? Because there's contracts and transactions. Contracts and transactions. In Mecca, was there trans, uh, transactions and contracts? Um, the fiqh was there. There was maybe little bit but not the details about transactions so this is correct do we have the same answer from the students online yes that's good the second ayah أَفَرَأَيْتُمُ اللَّاتَ وَالْعُزَّةِ وَمَنَاتَ الثَّالِثَةَ الْأُخْرَى أَلَكُمُ الذَّكَرُ وَلَهُ الْأُنْثَى do you know اللات العزة and منات what are they idols, idols. So these are three ayat. أَفَرَأَيْتُمُ اللَّاتَ وَالْعُزَّةِ This is one ayah. وَمَنَاتَ الثَّالِثَةَ الْأُخْرَى A second ayah. أَلَكُمُ الذَّكَرُ وَلَهُ الْأُنْثَى This is the third ayah. So, is it Mecca or Madani? Mecca. Why? There is no lat and uzza in Medina. Mostly the ayat the Meccan ayat, they deal with Tawheed, with worship. So it is Mecki ayah. Another thing, even if there, if there were no idols mentioned, the, the amount of the ayah is short. It's not long ayah. So this is an indication that the ayah is Mecki. The third one, لَقَدْ صَدَقَ اللَّهُ رَسُولَهُ الرُّؤْيَا بِالْحَقِّ لَتَدْخُلُنَّ الْمَسْجِدَ الْحَرَامَ إِنْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ آمِنِينَ Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fulfilled the promise to his prophet that he will enter the sacred house safely, he and his followers. So is this ayah, Mecca or Madani ayah? Mecca? Why? You have to say why. We have an answer, another answer? Madani. All of them? What do you think? Madani? Why? Why it is Madani? Because Mecca is already in the Haram. We can enter the Haram. He prays in the Haram. So Allah says it. It is Madani. That's true. Because this is after the Hijrah. The Prophet ﷺ was unable to perform the Umrah or Hajj. When he was already in Mecca, they were already there. But now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is promising him that they will enter Mecca safely. Safe, without any problem. So this is a Madani ayah. The last ayah we have. اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم وأتممت عليكم نعمتي ورضيت لكم الإسلام دينا. Today I perfected my favor, my ni'ma. I, I perfected your religion and completed my favor upon you. 
and approved Islam as a religion for you. So is this Mecca or Madani? Where this ayah was sent down? Where? Day of Arafah. Day of Arafah and Arafah is where? Mecca. In Mecca. So is it Mecca or Madani? Madani? Why? Yes, it is completing the religion. The religion was not complete in Mecca. We had 10 more years in Medina. So it is, it is Madani. It is Madani. Okay, this is an example, as I told you, this is an example. Once we have ayat, it's important to know where are they in the Quran, whether they are Mecca or Madani. Okay. Last time we mentioned the characteristics of the Medinan ayat and the Medinan surahs. Now we will mention some characteristics of the Meccan surahs, the Meccan ayat. Now you don't have to know this because once you knew the characteristics of one type, the second type will be easy. Yet this will help you better also to understand, to distinguish between the Mecca and the Madani ayat. First thing, calling to Tawheed. Usually calling to Tawheed happened in Mecca, not in Medina. And, of course, warning against shirk. This is also happened in Mecca. The eloquence in the style. Now, the entire Quran is eloquent, and the entire Quran is high. But... In, in Mecca, in particular, the ayat was challenging, so they were more. Refuting the suspicions of the idolaters. This is also Meccan characteristic for the ayat of Mecca. Now, this is an easy sign. Every ayah has the word nay, kalla. They say every ayah has the word kalla because again, the nature in Mecca was to challenge the disbelievers, so every ayah has kalla, it is a Meccan ayah. Just like what we said about the Medinan ayat, every ayah talks about hypocrites or jihad, it is Medinan ayah. But again, these are in general. What do we mean by in general? Sometimes, sometimes there are some exceptions. Sometimes there are some exceptions. Now we're moving to our issue. The important question. How did the Quran come to us? How did the Quran come to us? Now we earlier said that the Quran was not sent down at once. It was not delivered physically. So the Prophet ﷺ took it and the companions saw it and then everyone took a copy from it. That's not the case. So what happened exactly? Now during the prophetic era, during the time of the Messenger ﷺ, we know from the Sunnah and the Seerah of the Messenger ﷺ that he had scribers. Scribers of Wahi. We mean by, by that people that they used to write down the ayat once they, they come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why we have scribers of the wahi? Because the Prophet ﷺ himself, he did not know how to read nor how to write. He was unlettered. And this is a miracle by itself. In general, it is better for you to know how to read and write. But for the Prophet ﷺ, it was more miraculous. When he is unable to read or write, yet he delivered the entire Qur'an. So people would believe that it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is not from him. Therefore, he had some scribers of the wahi. Once an ayah was revealed, he calls on one of them and they write down this ayah. So that was the case for 23 years. Do you know any of those scribers, those companions who used to write the wahi for the Messenger وسلم, Do you know any of them? Because there were many 
of them. Abdullah ibn Amr al-As? No. Abdullah ibn Amr al-As? Abdullah ibn Amr al-As used to write the hadith of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Zayd ibn Thabit, very good. Zayd ibn Thabit, radiallahu anh, he used to write the wahi for the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ali ibn Abi Talib, radiallahu anh. Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan, radiallahu anh. Ubay ibn Ka'b. So there, there was, there were some people who used to write the wahi for the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, what was their job? Their job was to write down whatever the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam dictates to them. They used to write it. And he used to instruct them, put this ayah in that place, put this ayah in this place. So that was the job of the companions at the time of the Messenger Wasallam. Now, did they have one copy of the Qur'an at the time of the Messenger Wasallam? one full copy? No. Did they or didn't they? They did not. But what about the Qur'an itself? Was it all documented? Was it all written down? at the time of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Yes. Of course. Because the Qur'an was sent to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Once the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is not there, there is no Qur'an. So all the Qur'an was sent down at the time of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam never delayed an ayah to be documented. And he said later on. Because if we say this is a possibility, that means there is a possibility that we have some ayat missing from the Qur'an, which we don't. So all the ayat were documented at the time of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. After the death of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, at the time of Abu Bakr radiallahu an, who was the first Khalifa after the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Abu Bakr radiallahu an. What happened at the time of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu? Was the Qur'an changed? Did something happen to the Qur'an at the time of Abu Bakr? Musaylam al-Kadhab. al what about him? He started making up his own Qur'an. Actually, this, is, this happened even earlier. But Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu did something very important to the Qur'an. And because of his effort and the efforts of companions, radiallahu anhum, the Qur'an was preserved. Now, at the time of the Messenger, وسلم, we earlier said that the Qur'an itself entirely was not copied in one book. But didn't we have companions who memorized the Qur'an, all the Qur'an? Did, did we or didn't we? We did. Like, do you know any of the companions who memorized the Qur'an? Were there few, many... Abdullah bin Mas'ud, and the evidence when the Prophet ﷺ told the companions, whoever wanted to recite the Qur'an, fresh, excellent, as it was revealed, he should recite it according to the recitation of Abdullah bin Mas'ud. He memorized the entire Qur'an. He himself said, if I know anyone who knows anything more in the book of Allah than me, then I would travel to him to get this knowledge. So he is one of them. Who else? We have Ubay bin Ka'b. Ubay bin Ka'b radiallahu anh, he also memorized the Qur'an. Ubay bin Ka'b radiallahu anh, he was a rabbi, he was a Jew and he became a Muslim. Who else? Now these names are important. You have to know some of the companions who memorized the Qur'an. Ali radiallahu anh, he memorized the Qur'an, the entire Qur'an. Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anh, he memorized the entire Qur'an. Actually all the Khulafa, all the four Khulafa, Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman and Ali, they all memorized the Qur'an. Zayd ibn Thabit, we earlier said that he is one of the scribers of the Wahi. Yes. Says ibn, Abbas. ibn Abbas, very good. Ibn Abbas also, radiallahu anhumah. Ibn Abbas, Abdullah ibn Abbas, radiallahu anhumah, he memorized the entire Qur'an. Who else? So, do we have few individuals, less than 10, or we have more? Probably. Definitely we have more. Why? In one incident, in one battle only, during the lifetime of the Messenger وسلم, 70 of the Hafad were killed. The Prophet وسلم, sent a group of people to a tribe 
because they asked for some people to help them to teach them the Quran and they were sent to them. What happened? Those tribe, the people of that tribe, they betrayed the Prophet ﷺ and they killed those Huffad. So the Prophet ﷺ kept praying against them for one month. So they used to memorize the Quran. At the time of Abu Bakr this is what happened. Now the companions did not really care about gathering the entire Quran in one book because it was already preserved. How it was preserved? It was preserved in the hearts by memorizing the Quran. Because those companions, they used to take it orally, directly from the Messenger So if you memorize it, there is no need to write it. But it was there. All of it, but not in one book. So what happened at the time of Abu Bakr during the battles with the people who apostate, Again, many of the Qur'an, many of the Hafad of the Qur'an, they were martyred, they were killed. So, they felt that it is important to do something. Now, if everybody who memorized the Qur'an was killed, now we will lose the Qur'an. If everybody who memorized the Qur'an was killed, then we may lose the Qur'an. So, Abu Bakr radiallahu an asked Zayd ibn Thabit radiallahu an. He asked him, to gather the Qur'an in one book. Now Zayd radiallahu an, he said, by Allah, if they asked me to move the mount of Uhud from its place, it would be easier for me than gathering the Qur'an in one book. Why is this? Zayd already memorized the Qur'an. And the Qur'an was there already. So all what he should do is to gather the leaves, the papers, the rocks, and put them in one book. It seems easy. However, because it is the Quran, it is the responsibility, he wished if they asked someone else. Now why they chose Zayd ibn Thabit radiallahu anhu? There was a reason. He was the one who witnessed the last recitation from Jibreel to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi We said in Ramadan, in Ramadan, last Ramadan, the Prophet ﷺ, before he dies, before his death, Jibreel ﷺ reviewed the Qur'an with the Messenger ﷺ twice. It was reviewed twice. So Zayd ibn Thabit was there. He witnessed that. And he already memorized the Qur'an. He, he is already one of the scribers of the Wahi. So they felt he is the best person to, to take this mission. And he did that. Now, they established a committee. But Zayd ibn Thabit radiallahu an, he was the one who was responsible for, for that process, for that mission, to compile the entire Qur'an in one book. Now, there was a process going on. It was not random. Whoever said, this is from the Qur'an, they will take it and they will add it and they will say, this is the Qur'an. Now remember again, Zayd ibn Thabit radiallahu an, he already memorized the Qur'an. But they had a condition, very important condition. They said, we will not accept any ayah, we will not accept any ayah, unless there is a witness that it was written at the time of the Messenger wasallam. So, let's say you memorized this ayah, which you have, and it was at the time of the Messenger wasallam. It's not enough. There has to be another one comes and says, I saw you writing down this ayah at the time of the Messenger ﷺ. Why they made this condition? Just for further protection and verification that all these ayat were written at the time of the Messenger ﷺ. And they were successful. Now it took some effort, it took some time, but they did it. That's how the Qur'an was compiled, the first time. That's the first time from the time of the Messenger وسلم, that they compiled the entire Qur'an in one book, which did not happen to any book in the history of mankind. Nothing is added unless there is a witness that it was written at the time of the Messenger وسلم. This did not happen to any book, but to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
That's the level of the accuracy and the documentation. Yes? To one person writing down the second witness. Yes. And he saw him there. Yes, one person writes down the ayah, the second one should see this. Should say that, yes, it happened at the time of the Messenger. Now they were able to do that. As I told you, Zayd ibn Thabit already memorized the Quran, so he knows already what he's doing, but he needed witnesses. Now he said, Zayd radilan, he said, we were able to do that to all the ayat except for one ayah. Only one ayah, they saw it written with one man, but he did not have a witness. This is the last ayah of Surah At-Tawbah. لَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مِّنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ عَزِيزٌ عَلَيْهِ مَا عَنِدْتُمْ حَرِيسٌ عَلَيْكُمْ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ رَأُوفٌ رَحِيمٌ فَإِنْ تَوَلَّوْا فَقُلْ حَسْبِيَ اللَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُوَ عَلَيْهِ تَوَكَّلْتُ وَهُوَ رَبُّ الْعَرْشِ الْعَظِيمِ Only this ayah was not there. Only one companion. What do they do? That companion, he had a unique quality. His name is Khuzayma رضي الله عنه. Khuzayma, the only companion the Prophet ﷺ, approved his testimony as the testimony of two people. That was the only companion and there is a story behind that. Once the Prophet ﷺ loaned one of the Bedouins something and that Bedouin he denied it. So he told the Prophet ﷺ, you did not give me anything. Do you have any witness? And Khuzayma was passing by. So Khuzayma told the man, yes, I am a witness that he gave it to you. The Prophet ﷺ gave it to you. So the man now admitted it and he gave it back to the Messenger ﷺ. Prophet ﷺ told Khuzayma, you were not there. How do you testify on something you did not see? Khuzayma said, O Messenger of Allah, I testify on something greater. I testify that you delivered the message from heaven to us. So how could I not trust you in something like that? So the Prophet ﷺ told him, your testimony is the worth of the testimony of two people. So from that time, all the companions knew that Khuzayma he had this quality. So there was no problem and they added the last ayah of Surah At-Tawbah. And by that, all the Qur'an was compiled in one book. So every ayah, first of all, Zayd ibn Thabit radiallahu he himself memorized the Qur'an. Because he himself said, we lost this ayah, we could not find it with anyone else. That means he already know it. But he could not add it unless there, there are witnesses. Khuzayma came and he's the only one, they needed another one. They did not find anyone, but it was enough. Because Khuzayma radiallahu an, it was sufficient that his testimony is the worth of two people. So that's how the Quran was compiled entirely in one book. Nothing changed from the time of the Messenger وسلم, except they had now one copy of the Quran. So it was preserved, it was there. Now the rest of the people, like Ibn Mas'ud عنه, he had he had a Quran, but his Quran was kept for himself. And there are few differences between the Quran of Ibn Mas'ud and the Qur'an that was written at the time of Abu Bakr by this committee. Now, it is important to understand that the job of this committee was to gather the Qur'an only. You will hear from some people, especially the Shia, that the job of this committee is to choose which ayat they should add or which ayat they should remove. Because they accuse the companions of the Messenger وسلم, that they changed the word of Allah. They concealed the command of the Khilafah of Ali radiallahu anh, which did not happen. The job of the committee simply was to compile the entire Quran in one book with the witnesses. Their job was not to choose. They don't have the choice. They are not qualified to choose. This ayah will be added and this ayah will be removed. They cannot do that. It is a major sin to conceal the knowledge to remove one ayah of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So their job was simply to compile the Qur'an. And that's what they did. The, the copy of the Qur'an was preserved. But people used to keep reciting their own ways. Now we know the Qur'an was revealed on seven different styles. There are ten different qira'at. So people used to read the Qur'an in different ways. 
during the time of the Messenger وسلم, and after his death at the time of Abu Bakr. That was not an issue. Abu Bakr died. He had this copy. The copy was with Abu Bakr Abu Bakr died. Where did the copy go? It went to Umar radiallahu anhu. Umar radiallahu anhu did not do anything. His Khilafah was for 10 years, nothing happened, nothing changed. But then, when Umar radiallahu anhu was stabbed and he was killed, this copy was sent and it was kept with Hafsa radiallahu anhu. Why Hafsa? Hafsa was the daughter of Umar. And she was the wife of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa so the Qur'an in one of the stages was kept with a woman. Now some sisters they like to mention this because this is an honor. That the Qur'an was not kept with the man, it was kept with the woman. Which was Hafsa radiallahu anha for a long time. At the time of Uthman, there was a very important incident that happened. And upon it, the companions had to react quickly. At the time of Uthman, Hudayfa radiallahu an was in Armenia. Armenia is a place in Soviet Union nowadays, in Russia, northeast of Asia. Hudayfa radiallahu an was there. And he noticed one of the people reading the Quran, وَأَتِمُّ الْحَجَّ وَالْعُمْرَةَ لِلَّهِ And complete Hajj and Umrah for the sake of Allah. Another man was reading the same ayah, وَأَتِمُّ الْحَجَّ وَالْعُمْرَةَ لِلْبَيْتِ And perfect the Hajj and Umrah that you perform to the house of Allah. So we have to Allah, Lillah, and we have to the house of Allah. Now this is different. And they started arguing, which is very dangerous. They are not arguing about a verdict, about a ruling. They are arguing about an ayah from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Hudayfa radiallahu went quickly to Uthman. He told him, you have to do something to stop this. People should agree on one style of recitation or on one way. Because now they are accusing each other that this is different, this is different. At the time of the Messenger وسلم, there was no problem because they knew that. They knew that Jibreel السلام, came to the Messenger وسلم, and he told him, tell your ummah, your nation to recite the Quran according to the ways they want. It was made easier. First, he told him one way. Then the Prophet ﷺ told Jibreel, they cannot. You have to increase me. And then Jibreel ﷺ told him two styles, two ways until he reached seven styles. Anyway, they read the Quran, it will be accepted. So the companions knew that. But now, after two generations, the generation of Abu Bakr, generation of Umar, now they are in the generation of Uthman radiallahu anh, People did not know that, so they started accusing each other. You don't know how to read the Quran. You, you are ignorant or even you are kafir. You are changing the words of Allah. Because we believe that whoever changed one ayah of the book of Allah, he's a disbeliever. So what's the solution? Uthman quickly called on Hafsa radiallahu anha. He asked her to give them the copy that was written at the time of Abu Bakr. And he called on Zayd again, Zayd ibn Thabit radiallahu anh. So now they have the copy which was written at the time of Abu Bakr radiallahu anh, and they have the chief of the committee, Zayd ibn Thabit. He told Zayd ibn Thabit radiallahu anh, your job now is to copy again this Quran. So just like copying the Quran again, photocopying the Quran. That was the job of that committee. And they, write, they wrote, according to one narration, six copies, six more copies. According to another narration, five more copies. These copies, what happened? It was sent to the different regions of the Islamic State. One copy was sent to Iraq, one copy was sent to Mecca, one copy was sent to Asham, one copy was sent to Egypt. And there is one copy, they argued whether it was sent to Yemen or not. So they sent these copies. And they kept the original copy. It was kept with Uthman radiallahu an or with Hafsa. But they did something extra, which is very important. After they wrote 
the copy of the Quran after they wrote the extra copies they asked everyone else who has something different than this copy to destroy it to get rid of it to burn it it was not allowed anymore to read according to any different thing which is not written here why now when the committee was established Zayd ibn Thabit radiallahu an Hisham ibn Sa'id ibn al-As and the others they were from Quraysh there are some differences so Uthman radiallahu an told them anything that you have difference in it you write it according to the language the the di dialect of Quraysh so that's what happened in a matter of dispute you write it according to Quraysh that's what they did but the difficult thing was to forbid other people from reading according to other styles and actually some companions they opposed that like Ibn Mas'ud in Iraq he said how come you want me to get rid to burn my copy of the Quran which I read entirely to the Prophet I recited my entire Quran to the Prophet so he refused but of course all other Qurans they were burnt they were unexisted anymore Ibn Mas'ud after some time he regretted and he stood on the member and he said I admit that this is better now it was true Ibn Mas'ud he has all right to keep his copy because again the Prophet approved it but later on people will not know they will say which one is the Quran this one or that one there is maybe a difference in one ayah there is a difference in, in, in one word so what do they do so Ibn Mas'ud for the sake of unity he knew that this is the best for Muslims that's what happened all other copies were were destroyed from now on the Muslims united on one copy this happened at the time of Uthman and we had the Quran preserved now at the time of Uthman until now all the the the, the Qur'ans that are written nowadays they call them Al-Mus'haf bil rasm al-Uthmani the Ottoman scripture what do they mean by this the script of Uthman radiallahu anhu because the script of Uthman it includes the 10 different qira'at and we will discuss this further inshallah in the class about the different qira'at the qira'at al-mutawatira which will be next week inshallah we will discuss it but now I just want you to know that at the time of Uthman radiallahu anhu the Quran was was preserved again another step of preserving the Quran it is only what's the difference now if you're asked what's the difference between what happened at the time of Abu Bakr and at the time of Uthman there was not much difference actually at the time of Abu Bakr they just had everything and they gathered it in one book that's all what they did at the time of Uthman they had that copy which was written at the time of Abu Bakr and they made other copies from it but the real difference was people were not allowed anymore to read according to anything which is not in this copy which is not in the master copy the copy that they had two witnesses on it because maybe the Prophet ﷺ taught you one ayah according to one style but he did not teach it to other companions so maybe this ayah became abrogated later on and you think it is not maybe this ayah for you you were given this ayah and the Prophet ﷺ gave you meaning of this ayah and you added the meaning so now you have the ayah and you have a meaning the Quran is only the ayat the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so we don't know that's why to eliminate any possibility that maybe it's not Quran people were commanded to read according to one Quran Al-Mus'haf Al-Jami' which was the copy that was compiled at the time of Abu Bakr that was photocopied at the time of Uthman radiallahu anhu so that's the real difference between the time of Abu Bakr and the time of Uthman the same committee Zayd ibn Thabit radiallahu anhu took care of that at, at the first time he had to ask people he had to see witnesses now he doesn't need he has the copy and he needed to do photocopies now at the time of the messenger وسلم, and at the time of the Khulafa and later on when they used to write they did not have vowels 
they did not have the dots. Like in Arabic, we know the letter Ha. Ha is blank. There is no dot, whether on the top or in the middle. While Kha in Arabic, it's the same writing, but there is a dot on the top. Jim, there is a dot in the middle or in the bottom, if it's at the beginning of the word. So they notice that there is a need to do something, which is vowelization. That's what happened at the last years of the Khilafah of Ali radiallahu anhu. And the one who did it is called Abu al-Aswad al-Du'ali. Abu al-Aswad al-Du'ali or al-Dili is one of the successors, one of the scholars in the language. He was commanded, instructed by Ali radiallahu anhu to do this. Not only put the dots, but also the vowelization. Like, Ya, yeah, we know the letter Ya, yeah, it has one dash on the top, which is called Fatha. While Kasra, one dash on the bottom. All this happened at the time of Ali radiallahu anhu. It started there. So this is the second stage of development. Now remember, this does not pertain only to the Qur'an. It was to the language itself. Just like a new technology. Just like a new technology. People did not know the laptops. They used to have desktops until laptops came later on. And they did not have scanners. They had photocopiers and then they had scanners. The same thing. They had the word. The word is there, but the vocalization was not there. The dots were not there. Later on, this happened. Some people, still, they did not accept it. They don't want it. Some people, they don't like technology, specific thing. They don't like cell phones. They don't want to use them. Other people will use them. So that's why there are manuscripts for the Quran after 200 years and still without the vowelization. Some people did not want it because it's the Quran. It's still the same. The word is there. But it doesn't have vowelization. Other people, they accepted it. And actually, at the time of Ali radiallahu and later on, there were two major cities in Iraq. They were competing each other. Especially in the language, Al-Basra and Al-Kufa. Al-Kufa, even now, whoever studied the language, the grammar in particular, they say this is according to the school of the Kufa. This is according to the school of the Basra. So... The two schools of thought, they were competing, each other. School of Basra and School of Kufa. So they said, we will use different, different vowelization. And this difference is existing until this very day. Until our day, this difference is existing. But some people, they don't, they don't notice this. Now this Qur'an, this Qur'an, is written according to the Kufi school. The Kufi school. Because remember, we recite according to Hafs and Asim al-Kufi. There is another school, which is the Basri school. Eventually, the, the Basra school vanished, but it was moved to Morocco and West Africa. And nowadays, the Moroccans, the Algerians, they write according to the Basri school. Even in the Quran. How? I'll give you just one example. Because one time in the masjid, a brother came to me and he said, Oh, there is a mistake in the Quran. <laughs> and I told him, There is no mistake in the Quran. He said, No, there is a mistake. Qala. That's how we, we write Qala. Now, this is Qala. This is Qala. You put two dots. This is according to what? Kufa. According to Al-Basra, this is Qala. They put one dot on the top. How do we read it? Fala. So you think, oh, there is a dot missing. No, there is not a dot missing. Especially, I don't know if we have a copy. We don't have a copy here. There is a famous copy, the Spanish translation of the Quran in the red covering. Have you ever seen that? That copy? The Spanish Quran? The script in Arabic is mentioned on the right and then the Spanish translation on the left. The cover is red. 
The cover is red. It's, it's an average copy like that. It is very famous, very common. This copy of the Quran is written according to, to this school of thought. Al-Basra. This is for them Qala. Fala for them, what do they do? They put the dot on the bottom. They put the dot on the bottom. Ah, so now you see what's going on here. That's how they write it. So again, as I told you, it's just like different technology. Some people liked it this way, other people did not like it this way. And they wanted to compete, they wanted to distinguish themselves, so that's what they had. Again, did it change the word itself? The word is there. But the way you put the vocalization is different. So that's only what happened at their time. That's what happened at their time. And as I told you, until now, it is existed. Therefore, if you receive an official letter from Morocco in Arabic, you may be confused. However, actually nowadays, they, they did not do that anymore. Everybody is writing the same way in, in official uh, letters, correspondence, except the Qur'an. They did not change it yet, which is better actually to be changed. So all the Qur'ans will be according to one volition. This should, should be done. But until now, it's not done. They did that for other things in the language. Now they, they write the same way we write. So this happened later on. And of course, afterwards, people, once they memorized the Quran, once they saw the copy that was sent to them to Damascus, to Asham, or to, to Mecca, to Iraq, they started making copies of the master copy that was sent there. And later on, the Qur'an came to us this way. Now the same Qur'an, this Qur'an we have, it is the same exact words from the time of Uthman عنه, which means it is from the time of Abu Bakr. It is the same exact words from the time of the Messenger وسلم. And there are very old copies, very old manuscripts from that time. We have very old manuscripts go back all the way to 100 years of Hijrah or so. So this is an evidence that the Qur'an is preserved. But even if we don't have the copy, we don't care. Because we have the memorization of the Qur'an. The Qur'an was never lost. Whether by script or by memorization. We have people who memorized the Qur'an and they took it from their shuyukh, and their shuyukh testified they, they took it from their shuyukh all the way to the Messenger wasallam. So it was preserved in two ways. By the script, the scripture, writing, and by the memorization. But again, that's the answer for the question. How this Qur'an came to us? Through this process. Now, at the time of the Khulafa, Abbasi dynasty, Umayyad dynasty, and later on, they used to like the Qur'an and honor it in writing. They wanted to show off. Sometimes they, they wrote the Qur'an with gold, with gold-plated words. And they, they, they pay a lot just to beautify the Qur'an and put a few things here. And, and these, again, these manuscripts are there until now. You have it. So there are many copies of the Qur'an. But the original one was preserved by memorization and by script. So that's how the Qur'an came to us. And with this, inshallah, we will end our session.